Welcome to Alien Skills. Today we are talking about blockchain and Bitcoin. If you are planning to watch this video, I can assure you that this whole channel is meant for you. So consider subscribing and click on the bell icon below if you want to stay updated. It's a very interesting topic and a bit complex too. Many of my users told that they tried to understand what is a Bitcoin and blockchain and they couldn't learn properly. So I decided I'll give it a try because blockchains are the future and you should learn it. I was thinking of a way to put this in a way that even the naive users are able to understand the concept. So I decided to explain this in three levels for your better understanding. One is a kid level. I will explain this to a kid. What is blockchain and what is a Bitcoin? The college level. I will explain what is blockchain and Bitcoin to a college grad. The third is a geek level. I will explain the in and out of the blockchain and Bitcoin to a geek user. This gradual build up will help you in learning about the blockchain and Bitcoin more easily. So let's start with the kid level. Suppose there's a user called Alice and there's a user called Bob. Alice is in US and Bob is in Russia. Suppose if Alice want to transfer $1000 from Alice's wallet to Bob's wallet. What Alice will do is she will log into her bank account. She will enter Bob's details, the amount she want to transfer then she submit the transaction to the bank. Bank will transfer that money to Bob. Since this is an international transaction, this may take minimum three days to complete. Also, we are trusting a third party, in our case this bank, and this bank is the one who verifies Alice, Bob and the amount that she transfers. So there are three problems we can see here. Bank may take a commission for doing this transaction, the delay of three days. We have to trust the bank organization with our money. Blockchain is a technology in which we remove this third party, that is the bank. Instead of we logging to the bank servers, there are a network of computers. These computers, known as the nodes, will process the transaction request for you. So in short, blockchain is a technology to do digital transactions without a centralized server using public computers. This technology can be used to do many digital transactions like money transactions, elections, notaries, smart contracts, personal identifications, etc. So this is called a blockchain. But what is a Bitcoin? In the simplest term, Bitcoin is one of the many applications of the blockchain technology in which the users whose computers help in doing a blockchain transaction will be rewarded with a digital currency called Bitcoin. This is the basic. Now let me explain the concept to a college graduate. You might be knowing by now the very basic of blockchain technology and the difference between blockchain and Bitcoin. Let's dive into a little more detail here. First, I will introduce you to four basic terms. Ledger or blockchain, nodes or peers, wallet, block. Let's talk about ledger or blockchain. Consider this as a giant statement of your bank account. All your bank account transactions will be present here. You cannot edit or remove a transaction from the bank statement. You can only add transactions to the bank statement. For example, you made a payment online and the payment failed. But the money is debited from your bank account. So the bank has to refund this amount back to you. If you check your bank statement, you will see two transactions now. There will be a transaction which says online payment debited $100 and your balance is 6892. And after that, another transaction that says Credited back $100 as refund. The new balance is $6992. So in the bank statement, whatever transaction happens, even if it's a refund, it is added to the statement as a credit or debit. Just keep in mind this concept. We'll move on to the next uh, term, that is not so peers. The computer systems participating in the blockchain network, which will help in completing the transactions, are called not so peers. See here, these yellow highlighted points are some of the nodes in the network. Let's talk about the next wallet. Wallet is a digital storage used to store your digital money. In this case, Bitcoin. So it's basically like your bank account, but this stores digital currency. A wallet has two keys. One is a private key and the other one is a public key. You have to keep your private key secure. If you lose the private key, you basically lose your wallet and all the money in it. More on how these keys are being used will be presented in the geek level. 
For the college level, you now keep in mind that there are two keys and you have to keep your private key really secure. That's all. Now let's move on to the next term, block. Each transaction or a set of transactions grouped together that happens in the system can be treated as a block. Once it is validated by any of the node, it will be added to the existing light curve, just like our bank statement. It's basically a list of all the transactions that has happened in the system. Consider this as this blocks address, which is always unique and can be used to identify each block. A previous hash, the address of the previous block it was attached with, and the data, which is basically the transaction details like the sender, the receiver, and the amount. Now let's see a flow. When Alice sends thousand dollars to Bob, the nodes or peers will compete with each other to finish the transaction. Once a node finishes the transaction, it will be added to the existing blockchain or ledger. And this new blockchain will be available to all the nodes in the network. Whoever finishes the transaction first will be rewarded with some Bitcoin. Please note that the Bitcoin is a value with 8 decimal points. So the smallest Bitcoin amount is 0 0.0000001 BTC or is called a Satoshi. The validation and processing of each transaction is really interesting. We will be learning about that in the next level, that is the geek level in the same video. So, hope you know what is a ledger, note, wallet, and a block now. Let's geek level. Now, we you know the basics, only thing that is pending now is to learn how the nodes in the blockchain compete with each other to process the transaction and how we can trust the transaction processed by the node. Let's see what is done. So, we will split the transaction into two parts for your ease of understanding. First one, is a request verification. Consider our case when Alice is transferring $1000 to Bob. We have to verify if the request came from the real Alice. Because if a request is made to transfer money from Alice to Bob by someone else, we should neglect the transaction. We will use private key and public key technology here. I will explain what it is in a very easy manner soon. The second part is the request processing after the verification. So once the system confirms that the request has been made by Alice only, the nodes will commit to complete the transaction. Because whoever completes the transaction will get a Bitcoin as a reward. There are thousands of nodes in the network who commit to complete the transaction. But how a node will commit and gets the transaction done is actually very interesting. I will explain this in a very simple manner in the course of this tutorial. So first we will talk about the first part. How to verify if the transaction is a valid transaction? You remember I told you about the private key and public key, right? The private and public key exist in pairs. That is, there will be always one public key existing for the respective private key. With the help of a private key, you can encrypt some data. With the corresponding public key pair, we can decrypt the data. If the public key is able to decrypt the data successfully, that means that the data was encrypted by the corresponding private key. The private key will be always kept private and the public key is available to anyone. Confused? That's alright. We'll see it through an example. So we'll take our case where we want to verify if the request has been made by the real Alice. Suppose this is Alice's wallet A. This is the blockchain network. And this is Bob's wallet B. Alice will send $1000 to Bob. This is her request. Request is from Alice to Bob and the amount is $1000. So what Alice will do is, Alice will encrypt this request with Alice's private key. So remember I told you, if a private key encrypted some data that can be decrypted by the corresponding public key only. So since this request has been encrypted with Alice's private key, it can be decrypted with Alice's public key only. So this request will go to the blockchain network. So every nodes in this network has Alice's public key. So they try to decrypt this packet or this request and the decryption will be success since it was encrypted using Alice's private key. So this is decrypted and the transaction is verified and the amount has been transferred to Bob's wallet B. Suppose there's a hacker called Charlie with a wallet C. So this hacker 
is trying to frame a request uh, that looks like it comes from Alice. So he's saying, please transfer $1,000 from Alice to Bob. And since he don't have Alice's private key, he is encrypting it with Charlie's private key. So the same request will go to the blockchain network. Blockchain's network, blockchain network came to know that the request is to transfer money from Alice to Bob. So they will try to decrypt this value using Alice's public key. So the decryption will fail because it has been encrypted using Charlie's private key. So the transaction will be rejected. Now the second part. That is how the transaction is processed and how a node will get to complete a transaction by computing with thousands of other nodes. So when Alice sends thousand dollars to Bob, the transaction will be available to all the nodes in the system. Obviously, the first one to complete the transaction will get a Bitcoin as reward. The process of transaction is very easy and we don't need much computing power and all, but there are many nodes in the network and also we don't know if the node who processes the transaction is a trusted node. Suppose this node is processing the transaction. If the transaction request is to transfer $1000 from Alice to Bob, the node which processes the transaction, let's say the node A, can transfer it to his account because he is the one who processes the transaction and so he can do anything with it. So node A should publish a proof of work and this proof of work need to be verified by other nodes in the network. If the majority of the nodes in the network verify node A's proof of work, then the transaction will be added to the blockchain ledger and node A will get a reward in Bitcoin. I know you might be still thinking what is a proof of work and how other nodes will verify it. I explain it very simply now. When the system receives a transaction request to transfer $1000 from Alice to Bob, the system will also send a puzzle to all the nodes. The puzzle is in a way that we cannot easily solve it, but if one node solves the puzzle and publishes the result, then other nodes can easily verify it. Let's see an example. Suppose this node finds the solution to the puzzle. This node who found the answer will publish the answer to the whole network. The other nodes will take the solution and simply apply it to the puzzle. If majority of the nodes agree that after substituting the value, the puzzle is solved, then the transaction is accepted and the block is added to the blockchain and the node who found the answer will get a reward in Bitcoin. In actuality, the puzzle is very, very complex and the complexity will increase if the number of nodes are higher. Also, the puzzle will have some cryptographic signature of the actual transaction so that by verifying the solution, the transaction is also verified by the other nodes. So, higher the computation power of your machine, the faster your machine can solve the puzzle and publish the results and end Bitcoin. The process of solving the complex puzzle and adding blocks to the blockchain is called Bitcoin mining and the nodes which do that are called the miners. Till now I have used the term nodes and not miners or mining. I have used the term node intentionally for your ease of understanding. I don't want to use the term mining or miners without explaining what mining exactly is. I hope now you know what mining is and I hope it will be more clear when you hear about miners and Bitcoin mining. I hope that now you understand something about blockchains and bitcoins. You can watch again the video one more time and I guarantee that you will learn something that you missed watching the first time. If you like this video, consider clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon below. See you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.